<clears throat> what up, guys? Welcome back to Two Dudes in a Six Pack. We're, we're going to get into another beer review, but happy New Year's. Hope you guys had a great holidays and all that stuff. And why not for the first beer of 2022 get into some mass produced beer from Peru called Cristal? Or, yes, Cristal. Um, don't drink beer in excess in huge. It's bigger than the actual uh, uh, logo almost. It's a uh, beer from Peru. Um, see if it says uh, it's five percent ABV, and that's pretty much all it says. It's been around since 1922. So, but uh, I have no idea what we're gonna get with this. We shall see. But, uh, yeah, I don't think this head's going to last very long. I think it's going to be kind of one of those mass-produced lager things. But, uh, yeah, so there's that. The can, I don't, um, I don't know if you can find this in the States or not. It's one of the more widely available beers here, but I'm not sure. It's also one of the cheapest. <laughs> Anyways, let's get into the review, get into the smell. <clears throat> yeah, it's got that... It's got a bit of that funk, um, that lager funk, that a lot of those kind of uh, any country in the world lagers that like you did every you find a lager like this in every country of the world, which got like a very predominant funk going on. And that's what this has. Although I'll admit it's not as poof in the nose, it, which is okay. Sometimes like that funk can be super overpowering. It's there, you get it. It's not super crazy though. I, I almost find like in the carbonation when there's a, a, a beer that has that kind of funkiness, it's almost like a way the bubbles come up. I, maybe I'm crazy, but um, I swear I could tell by the way the bubbles pop up because it's like that it's gonna have that kind of more funky aroma. There's a, there's a lighter, almost past the expiration date, orange aroma. Like uh, you're, you're pulling through your bag of oranges and you're about to grab one and you turn it up and it's like all like, it's all moldy on the bottom. It's, it's got a, kind of that, like past its prime citrus smell to it. That might be the funk just overtaking it. I'm not sure. But yeah, it's it's a funky lager, a bit of like a, a, a corn aspect to it. Um, the corn, it's more used, here. I guess it depends on the kind of corn, because there's a lot of kinds, there's like purple corn and other kinds of corn here. But I think this particular corn that's being used is not as necessarily sweet as like an American corn. So the, the aroma is not as uh, sweet. But uh, a little funk, a little bit of that, that kind of uh, mold or past expiration date orange zest going on. Um, it's not like, I don't smell, I'm like, ooh, this is going to be great. Not that at all. In fact, mm, dude, there's, there's something lingering in this aroma. I'm like, this is not going to be great. So I'm not, I'm not going to recommend it on aroma because I just think it's going to hit bad. But you know what? The other two beers I've reviewed so far from Peru have been like, you know, exceptional. You know, you can't win them all. But anyways, so yeah, I'm not gonna recommend it on aroma. Let's get into the taste. God, what the hell was that? Ugh, that was one of the strangest beer, just like, it took a while. Because at first, there, there was nothing. 
There was no taste at first. Like it completely skipped over the tip of my tongue. It just whoop, nothing. And initially it had kind of a clean, you know, so nothing. Then you had kind of that clean, watery taste, which, you know, okay, okay. You know, give me a light lager and it's fine. And then it had this, like, it skipped into almost like a, a, a cheap malt liquor taste at the back end of it. God, ugh. That is not good. Ugh. I'd take a malt liquor over this. I don't know what's happening with this taste. Um, there is almost like... It, uh, God, what... So there's a maltiness to it, but it's almost like, it's like you, you have, it's like a molasses taste to it, but again, like expired, like something in this beer expired, where, and, and it doesn't hit at the, at any of the, the, like the front of your tongue, it's all in the back, so it's like, it's like going straight for the gag reflex, just like, boom, it's, uh, and it's a molasses, but it's not sweet. It just has that kind of, um, that deeper taste to it. Um, you know how molasses isn't like super sweet. It's got like that kind of, that's, that's hard to explain. Um, but it's like molasses without the sweetness to it. Plus that, that like the moldy aspect of, of the orange that I was talking about with the, with the smell. That's like, you're getting that mold in the taste. It's like moldy molasses without the sweetness to it. Uh, not good. This is, this beer is not good. When you think of, you know, just general, like, oh, I'm gonna go visit this, you know, developing country, you're probably thinking, yeah, the beers are gonna be crap. A lot of the beers I've had so far have been fantastic. This is the kind of beer, like, this, you know, while the last beer is one of the best beers I've had in a long time, this is one of the worst beers I've had in a while. It, it's like, I just, even it being cold, like I got this, like even cold, not, can't do this. This is not good beer. I'm not going to recommend it for taste. Ugh. Um, all right. All right, something's going on. Um, okay, next category is about price. And yeah, I mean, conversion wise, this costs less than a buck. So, you know, not bad, but um, I guess it depends. Do you want a terrible beer for less than a dollar? I guess if you have less than a dollar, yeah. Um, God, I mean, I'm gonna give it a half on value for price. I'm almost not like, like it, this is worth like, I wouldn't, don't even give this to me for free kind of situation. But I'm gonna give it a half just because it is less than a dollar. This is one of the cheaper beers you can find around here. But, oof, not great. Um, okay, next category is distinction. How distinct is it? And it is distinctly bad. Um, like, um, I don't know, you know, it's just, you know, a not good lager, basically. That's all this is. And there's plenty of bad lagers out there. This is towards the bottom of them. Like, this, like, I will take, I would take any, any American lager over this. Name any of them. And there's some pretty bad ones out there. They're all better than this. This is not good. This is just like, we need a beer. And uh, it's been around since 1922. I think that's that predates Corona. If I'm not mistaken, Corona's 20, 1925, I believe. Um, so this predates Corona. Give me a Corona any day. Any day of the week. 
over this. I don't even need the line. This thing needs a line. This thing needs a whole lot of something. But the distinction, no. The distinction is just it is terrible. Um, next category is drinkability. And God, for 5%, the amount, like, I would struggle so bad drinking this. Uh, at five, It's only 5%, but it's like... It's just the, the taste, the flavor profile of this beer is horrendous. It's so bad. Like, hard pass on ever having this again. So, drinkability, no. Like, I don't know what, what's going on with that moldy molasses, no sweet whatever going on. But it's terrible. Hard pass. Hard just like, no, I'm not recommending on that either. Ugh. So distinction, no. Drinkability, no. Last category is what I buy it again. Absolutely not. This is not good. The only saving grace is that this costs less than American dollar. That that's the only thing that's that's like worth noting about this beer. Other than that, it's like don't get don't like like spend. Beer's not that expensive here. Just pay two dollars for it and you'll get significantly better beer. This, not good. Hard pass. So no, we'll not be buying it again. So I don't know, there's really not much to say about this beer other than it sucks. <laughs> but uh yeah anyway, anyways, that's my review of uh Crystal out of Peru. I think there's other crystal beers um floating around, but this one is specifically from Made in Peru. So, uh, I'm not really sure why there's, like, an Egyptian sphinx on it. I don't think there's many sphinxes around here. Maybe I'm mistaken, but I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's my review of this. Not great. But, uh, hopefully the rest of 22, 2022 and the beers I'm getting into are not as bad. They, they, they can't be, right? They can't be. So, um, anyways, like, subscribe, do all the good stuff. Um... And yeah, Happy New Year's, and uh, I will catch you guys later. See ya.